I have um, not been on Periscope very much the past, I want to say, 10 days maybe. Um, and there's a big reason why I haven't been on Periscope. So thank you for tuning in for those of you jumping on live. And of course, for those of you watching on the replay, I'm Christine Gallagher D. Philippus, and I usually host a daily dose of dance every morning. And about, well, last Monday, last Monday, I had a very um, hurtful comment that came on my Periscope. And it's funny because it wasn't the first time I had a hurtful comment come on my Periscope, but for some reason that day it affected me. and. Then the next day I felt a little on edge about going back on Periscope, so I so I didn't. And then every day that came after that, it became an excuse to say, well, I didn't do it yesterday, so let me just take one more day off and then I'll get back on. And it was it's just been an awful time because I let this person who basically just said, you're fat. It let it affect me. And it's not the first time someone has said that to me and it surely won't be the last. But for some reason, it affected me that day. And I'm a fitness professional. I am not um, a cover model for fitness magazines. I'm a fitness professional teaching over... Now, I just noticed I've been teaching for 25 years. Oh, wow. So, 25. Wow. I've been teaching since I was five. <laughs> <laughs> no. I've been, I did start teaching when wow. I was 16, so I was very young. Um, but I've been teaching for a long time, and my weight has fluctuated. I've never had um, the the privilege of never worrying about my weight and just eating whatever I wanted and never having to exercise. I've always struggled. Um, and I'll talk more about that in future Periscopes. And actually I have another video that's going to come out about uh, what I struggled with growing up in the dance world as well right. as in the fitness industry, oh, yeah. being a fitness pro. But what I wanted to talk to you today about, because I haven't been on, and this is something that I struggled with, and I don't know if you struggle with the haters and the body shamers that are out there, not just on Periscope, but on any social media and just in day to day life. life. I get, I get people that tell me they don't come to my fitness class because, Oh, I don't look, I, I don't look like you guys in the class. It's like the work, it's, it's a workout. that's going to get you to look your best, not look like anybody else, but just look your best. So I have with me today, Melissa Toller hey. and you can follow her on Periscope. Um, just look in my, the people that I follow because I follow Melissa and she talks a lot about, um, you talk a lot about just a lot a of lot things. Of stuff, so yeah. introduce yourself to everyone and yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me here today. I'm so, I'm Melissa Toller. You can find out more about me at really melissatoller.com and I am a life coach and I deal specifically with women, um, on body image and body confidence and food rules and that whole I'm really an anti-diet, anti-food rules type of girl. So we'll get into <laughs> so we'll get into that today. But yes, hey everybody. So I decided to kind of get together with Melissa. Melissa and I meet a lot and talk often uh, about the state of like the media and the state of just what fitness looks like. Oh, yeah. People have told me not only is this person decided to tell me I'm. Fat, but people have told me in the past that um, they're like, I went on a date once and they're like, oh, you don't look like you're a fitness professional. Like, hmm, what is a fitness professional supposed to look like? Are they supposed to look like the cover of a magazine? Because I can tell you, a lot of those women on the covers of the magazines don't look like the covers of the magazine. <laughs> oh my God. So, no. um, I know that I've had um, even other fitness professionals same mean comments to me. I once had a fitness prof another fitness instructor. We went out to dinner and she said, um, as I'm eating my meal, which was like salad and some pasta, like it wasn't a huge amount of food. Um, and meanwhile, she's very thin and tall and she's got this massive amount of food. She looked at me and said, you eat that and you look like that. And my heart just sunk because um, it's just very hurtful because mm -hmm. I do struggle. It's a struggle that I have and I can't just eat whatever I want. Um, so I felt very hurt by the, by that comment from someone that's a fellow fitness person that, and who I thought actually at the time was my friend, um, who obviously wasn't, mm -hmm. but, but these, this all kind of, I, I've been thinking about all these situations over the past, um, you know, week and a half. And then there was a hello giggles article that Melissa put on my oh. Facebook wall actually a, 
a newspaper article that was out about two fitness pros that have a studio, and I can't even remember where it was, yeah. but they got a, a, a letter in the mail, like some person decided to be very hateful and write comments saying, you're too fat to own a studio, whatever. And it just got me thinking about, um, they, they obviously bounced right back from it. Like the article talked about how they went back and didn't let this person affect them. But how many times, like for me this past week, it affected me. It affected my ability to teach better classes. Like it, it affected my confidence. It affected, um, I didn't periscope for what, 10 days. Mm -hmm. So how do you bounce back from this? And Melissa and I have been having conversations about this over the last week. So I wanted to kind of share it. And I'm sorry, we can't really, we're going to be like leaning in. <laughs> we can't really see. I'm hey. using my, my um, phone today. So I can't really see the comments. But we'll go back and make sure to, we'll respond to any questions or comments that you have on Twitter. Uh, so if you're connected your Periscope to Twitter, we can reply. Or you can even... Tweet either of us yes, um, any questions or comments that you may have. But we want to kind of have a conversation, not just between the two of us, but for you guys as well. Because um, as women, like this is something that we 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 struggle with. And oh yeah, it sucks. I mean, it just unfortunately we live in a culture, and we have lived in a culture where it seems to be okay to shame people. And to judge people based on the way that you look. And like we're just supposed to get used to that. And um, people think that shaming is a form of motivation. Like so mm -hmm. if I tell you you're fat, you're going to go and do something about it. And so that's just, that's, yeah. just not how, that's not how it works. That's not what motivates people. Even though we tend to think, oh, well, if I say mean things to myself and if people call me fat, then I'll want to do something about it. But it's really um, a destructive means mm -hmm. of doing something about it. And that's just not how it works at all. And here's the reality. People are always going to say hurtful comments. Mm -hmm. It's um, just a part of life, unfortunately, in our culture. But it's also just a part of being part for you being in the fitness industry. Mm -hmm. Um Fortunately, there are quite a few fitness professionals who are trying to transform that and making fitness for everyone. And that's what I love about Red Hot Dance Fitness. Like you, it's for everyone. Yeah. You don't have to be a dancer mm -hmm. because I've taken Christine's class. I am not a dancer. <laughs> She's and not moves now. <laughs> it was great. And so like fitness is for everyone and fit, FYI, is not a look. Like yeah. fit is not a look. Fitness is not about um, about abs and being shredded. It's none of that. It's about how you perform and how you move in the world. And, and about how you feel. How you I mean, feel, yes. if you think about um, just your overall life and, and living your life, like you could have um, a six pack and not be happy. Totally. You could have, um, you could be thin, uh, but like how you feel is going to affect your happiness much more than just having a six pack or having guns or whatever. And additionally, um, your inside health, like I always think about like your, like your organs and, and whether or not you're going to have a heart attack mm -hmm. or, um, even have like anxiety issues and have yeah. all these other physical manifestations of Absolutely. what, what working out basically working out will help you to improve on what's inside as opposed to just like the external look. And you know, a lot of us we're you can be a little vain. It's not like working out is just about, yeah. you know, being healthy and, but you know, it, it's that extreme that like you work out to have a six pack. Like, it's, so I think, it's you know, and I, I think it's, it's totally okay to have aesthetic goals. If you want to look a certain way, I think the thing is though, you have a choice. It's not a requirement mm -hmm. to be ripped and be a fitness professional. It's not a requirement to be a size four, to be deemed beautiful. Like it's not a requirement. The freedom I think is in the choice. You can choose how you want to look, but a lot of us behave as if it is a requirement yeah. to look a certain way. And that's just BS. It's just BS. Yeah. And, and sometimes it's not even possible because oh, yeah. 
I not. myself personally, I mean, I've tried every diet. I've tried every extreme thing in the world. And I know that most of the way physically I'll look depends on what I'm eating, not mm-hmm. necessarily. I could work out all day long. It's really about what I'm eating. But even at my strictest, my very restrictive diet, I mean, I'll tell you, I was once on the boiled chicken diet um, where I ate nothing but boiled chicken and grilled asparagus. I was the most miserable person in the world. I was still not um, thin enough or cut enough, in, oh, not even, not even close to being cut enough, to be on a magazine cover. Mm-hmm. Like, no way. I even, at that point in my life, I had tried out for a professional dance team and was told to lose about 5 to 10 pounds. And it was not physically possible. So when we set ourselves up to like try to reach these yeah like what we're supposed to look like goals it's you're just basically you know running around in circles because yeah. you're never going to get there. Yeah. You end up just chasing your tail and being mm-hmm. miserable in the process and then you never get there and then you and here's the thing self-loathing can come in all sizes like you said you can be at your absolute thinnest and still not be happy so it doesn't it doesn't matter it, you know you that self-love has to come regardless of your dress size the number on the scale what other people say about you because you can hate yourself all the way down to a size zero and then yeah. you just a size zero who hates herself. What, yeah. What yeah, because I was, I was pretty thin. And I think that, too, people were saying, oh, my gosh, you look so good. So that fed into that, oh, oh my yeah. God, I well, people tell me I look good. So now my whole life is going to be grilled chicken and asparagus. Mind you, I'll never eat chicken again. So when yeah. people ask me I've seen why I don't like chicken, chicken. <laughs> I don't, I'll, I'll starve before I eat a piece yeah. of chicken. I can't do it. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, like... Here's the thing. People will make comments about you all the time. And a lot of times it comes from people who are closest to us, parents, Mm -hmm. teachers, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever. And sometimes it's complete strangers who don't know jack shit about you, about Mm -hmm. your character, about who you are as a person, but feel that they can make these comments about your body. And so I think there are some ways to bounce back from that. Number one, we just have to accept that unfortunately this is just the culture that we live in. And we can change the culture collectively, but I think it starts with us as individuals Mm -hmm. and how we carry ourselves through the world and et cetera. Um, So I have three things that I think you can do. One is understand that their comments have everything to do with them Mm -hmm. and absolutely nothing to do with you. And then your case, this person doesn't even know you mm-hmm. and they felt the need to say, so how could it be about Christine when they don't even know who she is? Um, the second thing is, and this is hard for some people to get because I still have issues with it, but try to have some compassion for your body shamer because here's the truth. Like we're all kind of victims, if you will, of our culture where thin is better Women are supposed to be thin. You're more beautiful. Men who are with attractive and thin women are better men. Like we all like tied up in that Mm -hmm. BS. And so a person who is shaming you is still mentally caught up in that. And so they just haven't realized that this is not the way to go. And so I always tell people, I'll try to have some compassion for your body shamers. Like that's a really, that's, it can be a stretch Um, but you have to understand where they're coming from. They, they're basically saying the same thing to you. If you're someone who has shamed yourself internally, um, they're saying the same thing to you that you may have said to yourself as a result of being, um, part of our crazy diet, thin obsessed culture. And so I think the third thing is instead of wondering why, why did this person say that to me? I always tell people explore the part of you that agrees with them. Mm. There's a part of you, especially if it hurts you, if it's something that alters your behavior, like in your case, you haven't Mm -hmm. been on Periscope until now. Mm -hmm. What is it in you that agrees with that statement? Because your agreement is what makes it true. They're saying it is not what makes it true. So those are the three things I think are, can be really helpful in bouncing back. 
from BS body shaming. And you can just tell people to go F off to <laughs> yeah. if that works for you. <laughs> Usually I can do that. Usually when I do a Periscope and yeah. someone has those comments, I just, you know, like the few things that you said, I don't really, it's not about me. And I don't really do the second one very much, but um, yeah, I, I really do just don't, I don't worry about them. Just go away. Yeah. Um, it's, I'm, I'm doing what I need to be doing. And I know um, I'm helping other people too, because what I do with fitness isn't just about me. It's about mm -hmm. helping other people. Absolutely. So, but for some reason that day, and I think you're absolutely right. It, it for whatever reason that day I was, it really, whatever was going on in my life. And I, I don't even remember. I was, must've just been having a bad moment where there is some truth to it. I, I have, I have spent, I like to say that I'm a recovering body shamer, like to myself yeah. that I have spent close to uh, definitely 30 years, um, mm. talking to myself in a way that I would never talk to another human being that I tell myself, um, things that just, you would just never, yeah. never it's speak to anyone else. Why are you talking to yourself yeah. like that? Yeah. So, um, and even at my best, I would still talk to myself like that. So it didn't matter again, if I was thin or heavy or whatever, it was just, um, no, nothing was ever good enough. So when you spend so much time talking to yourself in such a negative way, um, even when you work back at, um, mm -hmm. work at improving that. Yeah. So I've spent the last couple years really changing my mindset and giving myself much more self love and trying to improve my confidence because it's something that I struggled with because I struggled with body image for so many years in dance. And like I said, I've got, um, a future vlog that is going to touch more on that subject. I think that that is exactly why his, his, her, her I don't even know who, if it was a man or female, mm. I have no idea because mm. I did not look the person up or anything. I just blocked them and tried my best to just go, you're gone now, but it's, it held, it stuck with me for, mm -hmm. for, for longer. But, um, there is like that twinge of belief in the yeah. back of my head. That little voice is saying, Oh, they're right. They're, yep, they're exactly. so true. <laughs> exactly. And I think here's a bonus tip. Don't be a jerk and a body shamer to other people. Like when you change your own behavior, you can, it makes such a big difference. I don't judge either verbally or in my head when I see other people. I, I firmly have the belief that all bodies are good bodies and, um, that has dramatically shifted my own feeling and, um, yeah, just don't be a jerk to other people. Stop talking about other people's bodies, whether they're thin, muscular, fat, whatever, no, it's other people's bodies are nothing to comment on unless someone asks you explicitly. So yeah. That's a bonus. And I'm not going to ask. Don't be a jerk <laughs> yeah. to other people. So I hope, I hope that you found these tips helpful. And one thing I'm just going to add to it because it's something that, um, that I learned as part of my mindset work about, you know, finding some self love and starting to talk to myself in a positive way is that I really need to practice that every day. Just like I physically exercise oh, every yeah. day. Like I have to get up, I gotta exercise, and that works my body. I have to like train my my that confidence muscle again because it, it was so hugely damaged for so many years that it's work and it's the smallest little setback like that happened, it just means that I need to work a little bit harder because someone out there is hating on me. I need to work harder on loving mm -hmm. what's what I have because I do have a lot of Great quality. And I, th I think the other thing is, it's we, you sound kind of narcissistic if you, you know, talk about yourself in a positive way. So, um, so I'm going to work at every day really trying to be positive. Um, like right when I start to get up every morning, if I need a little pick me up throughout the day, do a little mirror talk, like talk to yourself yeah. in the mirror by yeah. yourself. And, and the other thing is, Having friends who are like-minded, people mm -hmm. who are supportive, like we talk about this all the time. Mm -hmm. um, it would be awful if I was like some body shamer and came and said, oh, oh Christina, sorry, DVD, you could stand to lose a few pounds. Or she yeah. said the same, like that's just, be really selective about who you hang out with. Yeah. And that's pretty much why we decided to do this today because yeah. we had been having this conversation and it was like, well, there's probably lots of people thinking the same thing yeah. and... 
And so if you if you're watching this and you have any um, comments, please make sure to tweet tweet us because we love to. And I I think there's even a um I haven't been on Blab. No, me either. So Blab I think allows us to like have conversations yeah. that we're not together. So I'd love to get on Blab oh, yeah, and sure. do the these kind of conversations with other people and kind of just help motivate each other and build each other back up. So that way, um, there's no room for any of these haters or body shamers. So. Yes. That's how we change the culture. Yeah. That's how we do it. And not just in fitness, just all uh, everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. But yeah. Everywhere. Since we both work in health and fitness, it's, it's where we spend a lot of our time. So it's yeah. where we see it a lot. So I hope you enjoyed this Periscope. This is a little longer than the one that I normally do, but I'll make sure to, um, keep you updated we'll do some more periscopes together and some labs and and um we'll see you next time and tune in now here's here's the catch though i will not be periscoping tomorrow morning and it won't be because of any kind of um (laughs) negative you know talk in my head or fear fear that there's going to be a body shamer it's because i'm going to be at think fest philadelphia so so i'll be there all day but i'll try to periscope tomorrow from there uh, to give you a kind of behind the scenes of what that's all about. I've never been before, so I'm really excited. But I will be back on Periscope on Saturday morning, bright and early. I might even Periscope some of my class. And I'll see you um, on, a, on a future Periscope and on other social media too. So I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.